Hey guys, it's Sneaker Queens Customs here. I've been a professional artist and sneaker customizer for going on five years now, and there are so many things that I have learned along my customizing journey that I wish I had just already known starting out. Things like the supplies I needed, creating content, painting tips, and especially business pointers around getting paying clients were things I didn't know much about in the beginning. So if I started customizing in 2024, these are the things that I would be doing. First things first, let's get into the supplies you're gonna need to create your customs. Since Angelus has a huge array of customizing products, accessories, and paints, I'm gonna go over the must-have essentials for artists just starting out. So if you're working on leather shoes, the first thing you're gonna need is leather preparer and deglazer or acetone, which removes the factory finish on the shoe. And if you wanna take it a step further to prep areas that are more likely to crease, such as the toe box, you can also use sandpaper as an extra preventative measure to keep the paint from cracking. You're gonna need cotton pads to apply the acetone with. I prefer to use cotton pads over cotton balls because they leave less fibers behind on the shoe, but it's up to personal preference. So for the paints, you're absolutely gonna need black and white. I personally like to use flat black and flat white because it leaves a very minimal shine to it. If you are using a flat four coat finisher, that's gonna take the shine away anyway, so it's up to your personal preference with the design of the shoe if you wanna use flat or regular paints. You're also gonna need at the very minimum the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. If you take a quick look at the color wheel that you can also get from Angelus, you'll see that the primary colors are the foundation of all other colors. So if you reference this wheel, you'll be able to create any additional color that you could possibly need. Or you could just buy the 12 color assortment kit and choose the specific colors that you'd like. If you're starting on fabric shoes, you're absolutely going to need Too Soft, which is a fabric medium additive that keeps the paint soft and flexible. When using Too Soft, it must be heat set to work properly, so you're going to need a heat gun as well. Of course, you're going to need paint brushes, so I would make sure to have an array of micro detail and larger brushes consisting of the spotter, shader, liner, filbert, and round. Tape is gonna be your best friend when customizing shoes. Vinyl tape is pliable enough to bend around the curve of the shoe, while regular masking tape is great for covering large sections up. To apply the tape precisely, a detail knife is gonna come in handy here. So as I mentioned previously, you're gonna wanna have the four coat finishers on hand, which are clear coats that are gonna protect your hard work and seal it all in. Sometimes I've used multiple different finishers on one pair, such as mostly matte, but then some areas having high gloss to accentuate details and textures. So I recommend having all four finishers at your disposal. Of course, you can't use any of these products without shoes of some sort. If you were anything like me when you started out, you don't have the ability to just go out and spend hundreds of dollars on shoes. So you could either get some cheap shoes from somewhere like Walmart or Amazon, or you could check out your own closet to see if you have any really lightly used pairs to practice on. So those are all the essentials you'll need to get started on your creative journey, but I also wanted to list some non-essentials that are great to have too. And remember, you can always build up your supply collection as you grow over time. So to start off the non-essentials, paint mixing jars and palettes definitely make the process more efficient along with the easy pour twist top caps for your bigger four ounce bottles. I also like to have disposable gloves on hand when I'm working with my airbrush or additives like Too Soft to keep my hands clean and protected. Another nice thing to have are shoe trees that fill your shoes so they don't flex and move around as you're working on them. Angela's brush cleaner is also an awesome product to have to keep your paint brushes for as long as possible. And a pro tip here, you can add the cleaner directly to your water cup to really clean off your brushes in between colors. Now, let's get into the painting tips. While I can't give you an entire art lesson in this video, I will drop the most important thing to remember to become a better artist, which is that you must continuously practice. And by that, I mean you must make it a weekly, if not daily, part of your routine. Even if it's just 10 to 30 minutes out of your entire day, you've got to practice painting. It is the only way to improve as an artist and discover your style and capabilities. When it comes to customizing a shoe, prep is the most important step out of the entire process. You're gonna wanna spend more time than you think is actually necessary removing the factory finish on the leather shoe, getting into every crevice and going over the high crease areas multiple times with acetone. The second most important step in customizing is painting in thin layers. Between each layer, you are gonna wanna make sure each one is fully dry before moving on to the next. If your paint is chunky or globbed on, there is a high probability that the paint is gonna crack upon wear. 
there. When painting with colors that are more prone to transparency, like reds, yellows, or neons, for example, it's helpful to apply a shade more opaque underneath so you don't have to paint nearly as many layers of the transparent color. For example, if you're using red, you're going to want to take a lighter pink or red mixed with white and paint it on your shoe before your desired color over top. Make sure to always paint your edges. On shoes like Air Force Ones, for example, there are different leather panels all over the shoes that if you do not paint the edges, your paint job is gonna look way less professional. Avoid getting paint on the sock liner like it is your life's mission. It is virtually impossible to get paint out of this fabric and you're gonna end up having to cover it up by painting the entire sock liner if you get paint on it. Plan out your custom projects before you start on it with mock-ups. There are all sorts of programs like Procreate or Photoshop that you can use to digitally create your mock-up and it never hurts to physically draw out your designs and print out your reference images too. Be original. Don't be tempted to replicate other artists or brands. It's okay to be inspired by their idea, but do not directly copy their work and make sure to put your own spin on the idea. This helps you not only build your creative muscle and find your artistic style, but you're also going to be building an audience that follows you for your own work. Now let's get into content creation and social media. Social media is the best way to reach a massive number of people who can become a part of your community and your future clientele. Build your online presence by posting to as many platforms as possible and post on a regular consistent basis. There are so many platforms you can post to like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Pinterest, and TikTok, just to name a few. While posting quality content is like a full-time job in itself, you can take a day each week to batch create content to schedule and post throughout the week. Many pieces of content can be made out of just one project. For example, you could do a time-lapse of your painting process, give a short tutorial on how you did a certain step, and of course, you can always just show the finished product. Always keep all of your raw footage to repurpose into new content and make sure to always snap a few shots of your completed work to post to your socials. Spend time learning the basic principles and getting good at photography and videography so you can capture your high quality work in a high quality way. For video content, use the video for you page on any platform to find current trending audios that go with your art project. Additionally, when searching for trending audios, you can also gain inspiration from a trend that you can apply to your own niche and personality so people get an idea of who you are and what you do. When creating and editing videos, get to your point quickly. Too many seconds long of a clip can and will make people swipe away, which can cause your video to perform poorly. When posting your content, use relevant hashtags to help people specifically find what you do, such as hashtag custom shoes and hashtag custom sneakers. It's also really good to use tags that relate to the theme of your custom shoe, such as hashtag anime art, hashtag abstract art, just for example. Engaging with your community and making them feel a part of your world with things such as Q and A's, live streams, and behind the scenes content is so important to fostering a genuine audience that actually cares about what you're doing. Showing your face and personality makes it so much easier for your audience to get to know the person behind the work. Now I wanted to touch on some general sentiments and business tips that I've picked up on throughout my art career that I I think may help you on your own. Like I said before, showing your face and your personality is a great way to build a genuine audience, but you also need to maintain professionalism as well. You are the face of your brand, and if you're getting in wild arguments and comment sections, you may turn potential clients away, and even your own followers may decide to unfollow you eventually as well. Make your brand searchable on the internet and social media. For example, identify and use keywords on your page that people may be searching to try and find the work that you do. Take the time to respond to every comment and DM you receive. Even if they're just commenting emojis, tell them thank you or even try to start up a conversation. Get out into the community with local events for artists and small businesses and set up a table with your own artwork. Word of mouth is an awesome free advertising tool. Some people aren't even aware that sneaker customizing exists yet, so talking with people about your art can be super inspiring and really help you build connections as well. Stay in communication with your clients and be honest about your turnaround times. That not only builds trust, but it lets your clients know that you're very serious about the work that you do. Let them know when you're starting, for example, and keep
keep them updated on expected delivery times. But do not rush your work or compromise on your quality just so they can get it in hand sooner. If they ever have an issue with this, explaining to them that taking your time means they're getting your best work, which ultimately leads to the happiest version of your client. Always get a deposit and do not work for free. Time equals money, especially when it's just you doing everything. If they would like to see a mock-up first before committing or wanna see multiple design options, make sure to require a 10 to 20% non-refundable deposit. This can be applied to their final payment when they place their order. This ensures that you are compensated for your creative efforts and they're serious about working with you. It helps to have short and long-term goals such as increasing brand visibility or improving on a skill because then you are able to monitor your growth as a business and as an artist. Don't be afraid to try something new. As they say, growth only happens when you step outside of your comfort zone. Practice new styles you may not be good at yet. Always be open to continuous learning. And remember, YouTube tutorials are your friend. And last but not least, failures and mistakes are going to happen. It's how you learn. Don't let the fear of messing up prevent you from starting something that could change your entire life. So there's just some of the things I've learned over the years being Sneaker Queen's Customs. I hope you were able to take a few things away from this video to bring with you on your customizing journey this year. So if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you'd like to learn more about sneaker customizing, check out these videos here. Until next time.